thank you very much for for invitation to present some reminiscences of my contacts with Jerzy Plebanski and because of uh, my age I will start with really uh, telling you a history how for the first time I met Jerzy Plebanski and that also tells you a little bit about uh, his as a person and also he Jerzy Plebanski as a human being you see uh, uh, imagine uh, how you do it. Okay. Um, you see, in June, July 1957, I took an entrance exam to the physics department and you most of you remember this uh, room and you can look at it with some uh, nostalgic feeling because what we have here is of course bigger uh, one can even say nicer but history is there and you see uh, uh, of course before taking uh, before entering the uh, university at that time, you had to take an entrance exam. So I was there reading, solving the physics problems. And at a certain moment, this door here opened and uh, uh, young, relatively young person with uh, an oversized jacket uh, with tweet a uh, dark hair with a cigar uh, in his in his mouth walking around and he was just you know looking what what we how how we are solving the problems he said circles around once or maybe twice and then i noticed that we, he, when he was coming down toward me he slowed down and then he stopped and he said to me when the exam will be over, please get in touch with me <laughs> and, and left. Okay. So after the exam, I asked the people who were supervising us who, who he was. And then they said, oh, wow, that's a very important. He's uh, first of all, vice dean of the physics and math department, very brilliant uh, theoretical physicist. So, uh, after I, uh, well, we finished and then I was accepted, uh, fortunately, to this, to, to the physics department. And then we, when we was started in October, uh, our classes, uh, I met again Plebanski and well, he asked me where I'm coming from, where I learned differential and integral uh, in, uh, integrals uh, because I was using in solutions some solving differential equations and and he said well you see uh, let's wait two more years and then I will get in touch and and we maybe can can do something together uh, unfortunately Plebanski a year later left for two years, he, he won a Rockefeller scholarship and he left. Since 58 and 59, he spent in US, one year at the Princeton University and the other year at UCLA. But then when he returned and uh, he spotted me somewhere in the, in the corridors on Hoja 69, we started to talk and well, first of all, he uh, 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 let me show you a few pictures of uh, Jerzy Plebanski. I unfortunately I was not able to find a picture of Plebanski from uh, say 56, 57. So this is an earlier picture of Jerzy Plebanski and uh, Leopold Infeld. 
this was a time when they started to uh, discuss this uh, uh, book on motion and relativity. Yes. Uh, uh, here, uh, you see one of the things which attracted me when, when, when he entered the room when we were solving the exams uh, was his uh, ring. You see, he had a he had a really big, large uh, uh, golden ring. So, you know. And here is uh, Jerzy Plewanski in 1962, but uh, he had, haven't changed much since uh, uh, 57. Uh, you see his very dark hair, and unfortunately, it's not a color picture, but you can guess that that he has a really nice uh, chocolate tan. You see, uh, 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 first, uh, when we met in uh, 1960, when Plebanski returned from uh, United States, he told me that, well, maybe not once a week, but but from time to time, he will give me some exercises. And the exercises was just uh, integrals from this very, especially for the older people, uh, collection of special integrals or sums, uh, uh, great, uh, well, manual. Now we have Mathematica and internet, so nobody use, is using it anymore. <laughs> But at that time, this was the main source of, of, of information about complicated integrals. So, so you see, the agreement was that uh, he will leave a piece of paper with uh, Miss uh, Halina Neyman, who was a secretary of Leopold Infeld, and then I will solve these integrals and return and that that will go on and on and on so this process was going on and on and on but uh, when Plebanski returned in 1960 he started to continue these meetings with his uh, graduate students Jan Maryten, uh, Bogdan Bielnik uh, Stanisław Bazanski and he invited me also to participate. We were meeting typically in two cafes. Uh, one was uh, downstairs on the famous at that time uh, Chinese and probably the only one Chinese restaurant in Warsaw that was on the upper level on the first floor. But on the main floor, there was a cafe. So that was a one place. It was very close to Horsa, really walking distance. The other place was a Parana Cafe uh, with a lot of uh, plants. Uh, so either there or there we were uh, meeting and uh, the discussions were uh, really very lively on very different problems. Uh, so Bogdan was, was the picture of Bogdan you have seen here. So here is Jan Naryten. Uh, uh, I hope you remember uh, Andrzej. That, that, that's you. <laughs> that's a doctorate uh, celebration in, uh, at the University of Warsaw. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. You see, uh, one another participant in this in these discussions, not always, but from time to time, was Helena Einstein. She was a, a philosopher. Uh, so when 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 she part, part, when she was there, discussions were really very hot because uh, well she was trying to understand physics 
And uh, of course, uh, well, it was necessary to use examples, models, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you see, as a result of these discussions, from time to time, uh, uh, members of this of this group would write an article, kind of a review, published then in uh, Studia Philosophiczne or in a, a monthly or then later on weekly radar, some of these uh, articles were then collected in this famous book, uh, which was published, which was published later. So now uh, that's Jerzy Plebanski uh, from uh, his, uh, well, probably that was uh, last, his last visit in Warsaw. Well, you see, the discussions coming to the science were connected with two basic topics. One was exact solutions of the Einstein field equations, and the other was a complex space-time. So let me start with telling you a little bit, a, a very brief introduction into the uh, complex space-time. Uh, actually, uh, as far as I am concerned, it all started with, the, with a paper by Andrzej Trautmann on analytic solution of Lorentz invariant linear equations when, when uh, uh, Professor Trautmann introduced a complex Lorentz transformation in Minkowski space and then using this complex transformation on the Minkowski space, it was possible to find a, a complex Maxwell's equations. Uh, and of, of course, this same uh, procedure can be used to find a corresponding solutions in the case of a linear, linearized gravity. You see the uh, uh, Why it stopped? <laughs> okay. You see, uh, another uh, root of this uh, complex space time was an uh, uh, observation first made by uh, Newman and his students that you can perform complex coordinate transformations on known solutions of the Einstein equations in order to generate a new solution. The first example was the so-called nut space, where they have they have introduced, uh, as you can see here, a complex radial uh, coordinate with a new parameter rho, which is now called the nut parameter. And this, uh, when you apply this transformation to the standard Schwarzschild metric, you generate also a, a, a metric, which is not quite spherically symmetric, but very similar. Uh, it's not quite asymptotically flat. Later on, uh, Newman, and his students generated this procedure, first of all, to find a, a well, derive a Kerr metric by this complex coordinate transformation where R is the standard radial coordinate and U is the null coordinate in the Schwarzschild metric. A is a Kerr parameter and it can be done starting from the Schwarzschild metric to get the Kerr, but also, uh, but very quickly, Newman and his students uh, starting with reisner nordstrom metric uh, derived what is now known Kerr-Newman metric, which contains uh, uh, rotating, rotating charged black hole. Well, as far as the exact solutions of the Einstein field equations, uh, at that time, there were actually th 
three different approaches. One was to use Newman Penrose Spinner formalism. Newman and Penrose in 1962 reformulated the standard Einstein field equations into the spinorial language. The equations are very complicated. There are many of these equations and all practically all the coefficients there are complex. The other uh, uh, route was to uh, study properties of the now principal congruences. As we all know now, uh, at four-dimensional Riemannian space, at every point defines uh, four now directions. Uh, this is the starting point of the uh, petrol classification, of course, but once you fixed up such one uh, congruence and look at properties of these congruence, you can simplify the form of the metric. The other, the other uh, uh, method is just guessing, uh, and guessing, uh, not just guessing from uh, without any restrictions, uh, guessing introducing some symmetry properties. So, well, uh, in this, in this uh, uh, approach, using uh, not really Newman Penrose formalism, but uh, properties of congruences, uh, Robinson and Troutman were able to find the most general solution at that time of the D type which represented also what was really very important, uh, gravitational waves. So, okay. Uh, so here is the uh, asymptotic form of the uh, Riemann tensor. Here is the one equation uh, which which is unfortunately nonlinear, so there are in general situation no general solutions, but uh, one can one can uh, analyze the properties of these uh, of these solutions and show that there are really gravitational waves, and what's really very important that these gravitational waves are carrying energy. <coughs> Well, in 1963, Roy Kerr, using the uh, tetrad formalism, was able to find a solution to the Einstein equations, which is now the very famous Kerr solution, which represents a rotating black hole in asymptotically flat space. Uh, 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 well, uh, with uh, Professor Plevansky, we were trying to generalize this solution uh, to a more general physical situation. The Kerr metric contains only two parameters, mass and angular momentum. We were trying to find uh, the, 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 if possible, the most general solution of this type uh, stationary uh, of type D in Einstein uh, uh, general relativity. So, of, of course, the critical uh, moment was to find a general form of the metric, as Vacek uh, Psanowski uh, showed you, this general form of the metric can be written down in an even nicer form than here as a flat metric plus an uh, arbitrary function of one coordinate times a uh, product of, of two null vectors and another uh, function of different coordinate plus two null vectors. And uh, fortunately, you see in this case, though the calculations are very complicated, the basic 
fundamental equation uh, reduces to this very simple form. And since P and Q are uh, functions of two different types of coordinates, it's easy to guess that the general solution is the fourth order polynomial in P and Q. And, and this metric contains seven parameters. There is mass and NAT parameter, electric charge and magnetic charge, uh, rotation and acceleration and cosmological constant. Please look at this nice, uh, uh, how nicely these parameters form a complex system, M plus I, N, uh, A plus I, B, E plus I, uh, G. Uh, uh, and of course, it was a continuous dream of Professor Plebanski to find out, first of all, the general complex space in which this metric can be embedded, and then to find uh, possibly more than what is written here by selecting uh, real slices of, these, uh, of this complex space. Unfortunately, this problem has not been solved until today, so it's open. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, 